Hello everyone, this is Dennis and you are on the Den Electro channel. Today I will tell you how to change the voltage on one of the simplest types of switching power supplies. I think many radio amateurs have switching power supplies that are not suitable in voltage for any of your purposes. You put them away, don't use them anywhere. And therefore they lie dead weight for years. And of course it would be a pity to throw them away, because this is still a working device. Today I will show you how to change the output voltage of a low power power supply. Almost any voltage can be obtained. After this, you can connect the load you need to it. Naturally, provided that he pulls it. As an example, I will use this simple power supply. It has a minimum number of radio components on the board and this is very good. If anyone is interested, the power supply is made on an LP3669 chip. Typically, such power supplies can be found in cases like this. They used to be very often used to charge cell phones, but they are still widely used today. They power blood pressure monitors, scales, routers, modems and much more. As I already said, the power of this power supply is small. According to the manufacturer, it should produce 6 volts 500 miles amperes. The peculiarity of this power supply is in its circuit. In this picture it is greatly simplified, but I think the meaning will be clear. A transformer has two windings, primary and secondary. After the secondary winding there is a rectifying diode, a smoothing capacitor and a signal LED with a resistor. Usually, to make the output voltage more stable, additional parts are added. These can be Zener diodes, a TL431 microcircuit, or simply a voltage divider made of two resistors. And the signal from this node comes to the control chip. If I want to change the output voltage of the power supply, then some parts in this assembly also need to be changed. There is none of that here. Therefore, the voltage may jump a little. But thanks to this simplicity, you can easily change the output voltage. To do this, you just need to reduce or increase the number of turns of the secondary winding and, if necessary, replace the smoothing capacitor, in case it turns out to be low voltage. The resistor next to the LED is 1 kilo ohm. For my purposes this is enough and the LED will not burn out. And if you are converting your power supply to a very high voltage and you also have an LED with a quenching resistor, then the resistance of the resistor will need to be changed. If someone doesn't know how to choose a resistor for an LED, you can watch my video, the link to it will be in the description. Before disassembling the transformer, I decided to check the power supply and see how much power it can produce. For this I will use my electronic load. It is assembled on LM317 chips, if anyone is interested, the link to this video is in the description. It turned out that the maximum current that this power supply can produce is approximately 400 miles ampere. At the same time, the voltage increases to 6.4 volts. This is approximately 2.5 watts. With a further increase in power, the voltage begins to sag. The transformer for this power supply looks like this. There is a lot of empty space in the transformer window, so I decided not to disassemble the core. The new secondary winding should fit. Then I desolder the transformer and capacitor. When I removed the insulation, it turned out that there was a secondary winding immediately below it. This is very good, because I can find out how many turns there are and finish the amount I need. There are 12 turns here. I divide this figure by 6 volts and it turns out that there are 2 turns per 1 volt. If I want to make 10 volts at the output of the power supply, then I will take these two turns and multiply by 10. You will get 20 turns. And if I want to make 20 volts, then two will need to be multiplied by 20. The result will be 40 turns. But in this example I'll make it 12 volts. To do this I need to make 24 turns. But since I will leave the old secondary winding, I only need to make half, another 12 turns. The ends of this secondary winding are soldered to the legs. I unsolder one end and then solder my wire to it. I'll move their connection up so it doesn't get in the way. And I wind it in the same direction for another 12 turns. 
At first there will only be a test, so I solder the transformer not to the board, but through the wires. Now that I have rebuilt the transformer, it is better to turn on the power supply through a safety light. I plug it in and the LED lights up red. And I look at the output voltage. The multimeter shows 13 volts. Apparently I wound a couple of extra turns. It will be necessary to remove them. After I removed the extra turns, I soldered the transformer onto the board. As I said, I also replaced the capacitor after the secondary winding. I set it to 16 volts at 220 microfarads. Please note that it must be replaced immediately. Since my capacitor was initially set at 10 volts, and I made the output voltage 12 volts, the old one could immediately explode after switching on. Therefore, first change the capacitor to one with a known higher voltage. And then you start soldering the transformer with a rewind winding. I also recommend paying attention to the rectifier diode, which is located after the secondary winding. Is it suitable for you in terms of voltage and flow? I have a diode here labeled SS14. This is a 1 amp 40 volt Schottky diode. After rewinding the transformer, this diode worked for me for literally only 2 minutes. And then it was without load, at idle. Then the power supply went out. I thought it had already burned out. But then when I started checking everything, it turned out that the diode had broken through and there was a short circuit on it. In general, I had to replace the diode. I installed a Pulse FR107. It can handle 1 ampere 1000 volts. After installing it, everything began to look like this. I'll connect the power supply to the electronic load again and see what happens this time. Since I removed a couple of turns, the voltage is now 12 volts, not 13. As the current increases, the voltage also increases slightly, but the power supply cannot produce more than 140 miles ampere. At 150 the voltage already drops. The maximum turned out to be 12 volts 140 miles ampere. Now I'll try to connect something else, say two fans. These are fans from computer power supplies. Each of them is designed for 12 volts and a current consumption of approximately 100 to 120 miles ampere. This multimeter will show the voltage at the output of the power supply. And this current is through the load. I connect the first one, the current is 120 miles ampere, the voltage does not drop. Now the second one, total current 210 miles ampere. The voltage increased slightly to 12.1 volts. The power supply can easily carry two such fans. Now I'll try a different fan. It is also from a computer power supply, but larger. I turn it on and it uses 250 miles of amps. The voltage dropped to 10.5 volts. When I lift it, it becomes easier for it to work and it consumes a little less current and the voltage increases to 11.3 volts. This fan can no longer support the power supply at 100%, but in general it will do as a last resort. At 11 volts the fan also works fine. As you can see, everything is very easy. In a similar way, you can convert many power supplies that do not have feedback to stabilize the rectified voltage. In addition to simple rework, such power supplies have another undoubted advantage. It consists in the fact that several conclusions can be drawn from the secondary winding and several different voltages can be obtained. Let's say 5 volts, 12 and 24. The windings can be connected or independent, just like on a regular mains iron transformer. That's all for today. Subscribe to the channel, like, ask questions in the comments if something is unclear to someone, and bye to everyone.